Hello everyone, hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here. This is my third time attempting to film this intro because of the UK light ruining my eyes though, but you know what? This is my last week in this country, probably for forever. I don't think I'm gonna come back here to live. I don't think I've I've understood what is happening. <laughs> also another layer of chaos added to my life recently is that I graduated. It was a fabulous moment for me because out of all of the people in my ceremony, which were, I don't know how many, probably 150, maybe more, maybe less, I didn't count. I was the only one to drop their hat on stage because we were not allowed to shake hands with the provost. We had to go and kind of like nod to them and leave because of like COVID. I bowed to show my respect to the provost and my hat fell and I think my family enjoyed it. I was embarrassed because I, I, I just wanted to look serious, you know? I don't get many opportunities to play the serious adult card and this was one of them and it's gonna be ridiculous like everything else I do but you know what it was funny anyway I'm really excited to do this video even though the concept has definitely been done before and even though it is a bit like fishing for clout but honestly I don't care because it's about my Internet book queen and Carly Carly Thorne. She manages to make you want to read whatever she is describing <laughs> ah, Okay, someone someone just came by my window. That was amazing uh, Yeah, so basically the books I've chosen and we'll go out to find are Happy Hour by Marlo Granados, which is the book she first mentioned in her newest video, so it's, it's a new favorite, and it's supposed to be um, hot girl summer in New York with glamour, fashion, and a bit of self-discovery. And it's supposed to be a happy read, which I think I need right now. And then we have Memorial by Brian Washington, which is one of the books she has maintained is one of her all-time favorites. And something that's worrisome about it is that apparently people either love it or hate it, and this book makes them not trust her book recommendations afterwards, so I'm a bit worried. And then last but not least is a book that I would have read regardless of the reading challenge. It's Less by Andrew Sean Greer, which has like a really exciting premise and it's supposed to be funny and I love the premise. It's a breakup and this guy is trying to escape going to his ex's wedding. So he is traveling around the world accepting invitations to literary festivals, I think. And anyway, so what I'm gonna do is go to my local library like Carly would do because we need to keep our libraries alive and then what I don't find at the library I will buy and I know this is a bit of a consumer's take on the challenge but I have not been going to the bookshop as much so I will allow myself this expense. Once I find the books I will read them and then I will be back with my very exciting tea on them and evaluate on Carly's taste. If that's even allowed, it's probably illegal but I'm gonna do it anyway. <sighs> Somehow I managed to influence my vantage point And all the damage I did was like a new voice New choice, run for us, take it and I'm gone Yeah, you know what I'm on, yeah, you know what I'm on Got a smile on my face, it look out of place Cause of the tracks of my tears I dried up, eyes up, I'm thinking I gotta size up To the mountain I've been climbing, trying hard And giving all my time and thoughts and space I thought it was a waste, but then I pace and I fly I've never been so high so these are the three books I have picked out of Carly's long list of favorites. I'm gonna start with Happy Hour because I'm in the mood for it. And that's all that matters. And I actually like this cover, you know? Look at this vibe. Like, <laughs> ah, can you tell? Can you tell I was, I was finishing my philosophy degree? I'm like psyched to be reading a novel after writing more than 5,000 words on, on Hegel you do get very excited about a freshly released novel. I've never been so high 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 So last night I finished Happy Hour by Marlo Granados and 
I'm not going to share my thoughts now because um, I'm going to save them for the final section of the video, but I just want to say that I do understand why this is a non-Carly book. The language is really addictive, it's really, it's kind of like a cool girl kind of book. Um, I don't think it's my kind of book, but I did finish it, so you know, as always I'm having a great hair day. So yeah, uh, that's all I wanted to say. So when I'm Kick back and I see it so clear now. Looking at myself in the mirror, all of them thoughts disappear. I don't need to hold on to fear. Okay. <laughs> Last night I finished Memorial by Brian Washington. Uh, again, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I liked it more than Happy Hour, definitely. It kind of, um, I didn't vibe with the writing style at the beginning of the book, but then as I kept reading, I started caring about the characters. The last third and definitely the second half of the book, I enjoyed a lot more than the first and because I think I adapted to the vibe. Uh, it took me a while because the vibe was really dark. Also, I think this really filled uh, a, a big gap in my reading in terms of me not reading a lot of gay literature. I don't think many of the books I've read have queer stories at their center. So yes, and now we're gonna move on to the last book. I'm gonna bring it, one sec. Less by Andrew Sean Greer. So I'm looking forward to this. I think this is the one I was most excited about anyway. So I'm, I'm really, I'm glad I left it for last. So hopefully I will enjoy the third one even more. This is my reading corner and it makes no sense that I want to sit with my back on the heater, on the radiator, even though I don't use it because <laughs> it's a summer. We're also in the middle of a heat wave, not today, but in general. And um, I have done nothing useful. Is the book that is closest to my style of the three ones that I've read for this video. So I think this one I'm gonna like the most. And then this is a book that I'm reading and rereading and rereading again and again. And I never reread books, so this is rare. I don't know what this book has done to me since I bought it. I have, it's probably one of the only books in my adult life that I have reread and that I can see myself rereading again even while I'm rereading it. It's weird. Anyway, you know what? Consumerism and chaos are the two C's in my life right now. Cheers. I surely hope this does not reflect real events. Because if this is the behind the scenes of the literary world, every industry is dirty. But this is... But this is bad. <sighs> okay, I finished reading all three books. Hard to believe, I know. I am... Um, very confused about Carly's taste. The first book I read, Happy Hour, um, is the one that I would say I liked the least in the sense that <laughs> the cool girl vibes are there. So I see why Carly, as an OG cool girl, likes it. Um, and the hot girl vibes as well, I mean, obviously. <laughs> but this book, this book is all about, it's two friends who are broke and they're not American, presumably they're Canadian, and they survive for a summer in New York City doing whatever they can to make money. So either they sell secondhand clothes at a market or they get paid to show up at clubs because they basically use their personalities and knowledge to enter these socialite circles and then the protagonist um, Isa is also an aspiring writer, so there's that, and everything kind of goes well for her in the midst of this situation that sounds terrible. I mean, having no money and literally having to figure out ways to make money on a day-by-day -day basis to survive for a summer in New York, it's really hard. But like in this book, it sounds like a glamorous and super 
doable task and in that sense the book is entertaining you almost feel like you want to go try it yourself because they make it sound fun like a fun thing to attempt however i feel like the author i mean i might be wrong but i feel like the author is describing her life or herself the writing in it was a bit unbearable at times because I don't like it when I read dialogue and it feels so contrived, so set up, so like made to sound cool, made to sound smart, made to be like the kind of observation that you would read and think, oh my god, this character is so this or that, but you can see through it. I, I hate that and I felt this all the time with the narrator Isa, the protagonist. It's basically Isa and Gala, two best friends. It, the, it, the characters felt like sketches of real people because there were so many things missing from each character. So all in all, I like the idea and I like the, the I like the concept, but the execution was not believable in many ways. So for that reason, I wasn't a big fan, but I'm still glad I read it. And I think Carly likes it because the vibes are there. She said she likes fashion, she likes reading about fashion. And I mean, we know Carly's literary religion is Sally Rooney. She prays to her every day. So if we try to find some Sally Rooney-esque characteristics in, in, in this book, I would say the fast pace kind of addictive language, the emphasis is on character development and not on plot, and also the fact that there is this kind of defensiveness and biting criticism about life and about people, this emphasis on this interest in human psychology but also observing life in a very cynical way, that's all there, so I get it. But I wouldn't say it really is my kind of book. Moving on to Memorial, it was really, I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but the vibe of this book was miserable. I felt like the color scheme of this book would be a like a mustard yellow, so a lot more yellow than this orange here, all the way to all of the like really bleached versions of the colors, all the way to like a light lime green and just beige, but like really dead beige. And the weather would be just this stifling heat where you cannot function and the air would be dirty and the atmosphere is bleak and just the characters are suffocating in the atmosphere and that's how it felt reading this book and it was very depressing and I think sometimes when you read a book and you really cannot bear to pick it up again okay sometimes it's because it's a bad book but in this case it wasn't that it was a bad book it was that something in the book was clearly working on me perhaps at a subconscious level and I was avoiding it because it was too hard for me to come into contact with it. So it's two gay men in a romantic relationship. Uh, one of them is black, one of them is Asian American, and Mike, the Asian American, goes back to Japan to see his dying father, whom he has not been in contact with since childhood, whilst uh, Benson stays behind with Mike's mom, who has come to visit him. And as soon as she comes to visit him, Mike leaves. Like, go figure, it's really complicated as a premise. But the point is that they're all dealing with their dysfunctional families and their trauma that has been inflicted upon them since childhood and the fact that their relationship isn't working but also from the way they describe it it doesn't seem like it ever worked so that is depressing in itself and then both of them it's not like they have something they do in their daily lives that they enjoy it kind of has all of life's shit in it like you know family problems, relationship problems, boredom problems, money problems, professional problems, nothing is going well for these people, I would say. I will say language-wise, this was also pretty addictive to read. Like, as, as long as you could pick it up, because I struggled to pick it up, but when I did, I couldn't stop reading. And of all these books, this is the only one that recognizes we live in a world with cell phones. With cell phones? And that is such a pet peeve of mine, the fact that we live in a world that is so dominated by social media and yet contemporary authors writing contemporary books with young protagonists. And they pretend social media doesn't exist. I mean, this book, I think I underlined, because I was so annoyed, I think I underlined the two or three instances in the entire book where a phone was mentioned. You know, the, this is two girls running around in New York City, and it's like they're running around in New York City in the 70s or 80s. Probably nobody likes the influence of social media on our psychology, and 
much less authors who probably idealize the time when you would walk around and observe things about life instead of scrolling through your phone and feeling your brain cells dying and also idealizing New York City when it was cool. We always feel like we live in the uncool era. God, please stop ignoring social media and technology because I struggle with it and I want to see the characters struggle with it too. They are young women in their 20s in New York City and we follow them all the time. We learn about everything they do and everything they think except they never hold or are concerned with their phones. Like it doesn't make any sense at all. At least here people are texting. I really like the representation of a gay relationship where HIV for example features in this book in a very real, very modern way, very non-stigmatizing way. Like that is so good and so important. Carly seems to like chaotic energy. Again, there is that kind of biting. Carly said it was really sad and I agree, it is really sad, but I liked it. I thought it was a really good book and I'm glad I read it. And I liked it a lot more than Happy Hour, I would say. This, however, brought me back to a lighter mood. Um, this was very lighthearted, but not superficial. Uh, the character felt very well sketched out. The protagonist, Arthur Les, trots around the globe to avoid going to his significant others, or rather ex-significant others' his wedding. Um, but also he doesn't want to say he can't go to the wedding because that will look like he's avoiding the wedding. So he will go to every stupid literary festival invitation he has gotten that he would normally not accept because it sounds like a lame event to go to. And he kind of observes humorously. This is a writer's book, a middle-aged writer going through his midlife crisis because his books are not doing as well as he would like them to and his new book is rejected by a publisher. Obviously his love life is in shambles. I could tell that I was supposed to find a lot of things funny that I didn't laugh with as much um but I, but it was funny it was really well written and of the three books I would say this is more the writing style that I like. I didn't understand how the ending made sense, but maybe it's just my taste or the vibe that I'm in right now, I don't know. However, I really like how this book is a satire of the writer's world, of how it's pretentious and how it's really not as important as some writers want to think it is. And I found that in Writers and Lovers by Lily King, in Beautiful World Where Are You, Sally Rooney literally obliterates writers everywhere. She's just, she makes fun of everything. And Andrew Sean Greer, the author, admitted in an interview that it's partially aut autobiographical. And I'm just dying to know. I want to know who he has based these people on. And in many ways, you do wonder if Arthur Less is the author himself, but with a bit more, with, with a bit of sauce. And I think Carly really liked this because it's very humorous. It is really, the vibe is cool. There is emphasis on aesthetics and the author goes to many cool places, but also there is the emphasis on character building, introspection, introvertedness. It didn't occur to me, but everyone here is an introvert, or at least definitely in, in these two books. Um, yeah, this was definitely less overtly cynical than the other two. It was a much more complex attitude toward, towards things, and perhaps instead of cynical, I would say it was more resigned. It feels like the guy's a bit exhausted. <laughs> He's like, I can't deal with life anymore, okay? Everything is going to shit, so I might as well just keep going and make some comments about it <laughs> and be comical. Anyway, I am so glad that Carly is embracing chaos in her life right now because I am in my chaotic era and I need the encouragement from such a queen. All of these three books have that in common. People who are going through their chaotic but queen energy in their life. They're all like, yeah, my life is chaotic, but it's okay. And I need that. <sighs> so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. And I will see you next week. Bye.